It's been one year since the Black Scientist Task Force on Vaccine Equity launched a number of initiatives to increase vaccination rates in the Black community. Though there have been some strides made, there have also been some challenges, with the task force saying this work is not done yet. I've heard some, some statements saying, you know, this is the last mile for, for racialized communities, particularly the Black community. I think we haven't even started the race. I think we're warming up. To the Black Scientist Task Force, with the help of local networks, have helped to get the majority of Ontarians vaccinated. But the group says vaccination rates in the Black community is lower than the general population. Just looking at postal codes, um, we can see that the highest under vaccinated postal codes have larger black and racialized populations. And um, that's the case, that's the consistent case right across um, Ontario. But um, we also have um, some, we've made some considerable progress in some postal codes that have large black populations and have attained parity. And that information is broken down even further. I think that 5 to 11 is, is significantly a challenge. Even within the uh, booster vaccine, we also see a lot of uh, underrepresentation uh, of black, indigenous and racialized communities. So there's a lot of work to be done. Throughout the pandemic, racialized communities, including the black community, have been at higher risk of contracting COVID-19, getting hospitalized and dying. Many in these communities are frontline workers. Overexposed and undervaccinated. So um, overexposed, you should be overvaccinated if you really want to sort of mi mitigate risk. And I say mitigate risk. Um, black people, because of social determinants of health, tend to have uh, um, a greater prevalence of chronic conditions. Like diabetes, asthma, heart conditions that leave you more vulnerable to severe illness. The task force says public health measures have been working, but... We've fallen a bit behind because the rules changed and the messaging changed, but because of vaccine mistrust and hesitancy and a whole lot of uh, misinformation, uh, people are skeptical, have been skeptical about the third dose and the fourth dose and, and getting their child vaccinated. Community organizations across the GTA leap to action in providing supports and services early on in the pandemic. And when it came time providing vaccine education and hosting vaccine clinics, meeting the community where they're at. Today we see first people who come for their first dose. And we ask questions and we talk to them and we say, so what happened? And it's that you know, continuous conversation. You have stopped using the word hesitancy. It's about trust. And that comes from um, historical um, and political uh, challenges that the, that the Black communities have faced. The task force says there needs to be continued engagement from all levels of government and the networks that have worked in these communities. One forum, one flyer, uh, one workshop, it, it, that's not going to do it. It has to be a sustained, ongoing conversation, discussion. Uh, and this is not about, um, you know, like trying to convince people or force people, but it is about to allow them to um, address the concerns that they have however long it's going to take. And something that Black health leads have been calling for even prior COVID-19 is the collection of race-based data. And during the pandemic, they renewed their calls for the province to collect this information, saying it's vital to identify these disparities and address them in real time. In Toronto, I'm Faisa Amin for City News.